So I really need to get out and get on the bike. If any of you have been over on my other channel, you'll know it's been a pretty rough week for me. So I think getting on the motorcycle is going to be really nice here. And that's what we're going to do today. Just get on the 890, go for a ride, do some off-roading and some on-roading. And as we're riding, just seeing the characteristics of the bike, me talking throughout the ride, I'm going to give you my first impressions. This is not going to be the whole review of this bike because I, I need to put a few more miles on. I think I might be right around... 800 or 700 something like that I, I don't know anyways i go up to the tail of the dragon next week up to tennessee so i'm gonna take it on a tour and everything and i'll be able to really grind in the honeymoon phase will be away i'll be able to let you know everything about it twisties off-road so on and so forth but right now i want to give you my first impressions you all know me coming from a 2022 africa twin uh, i'll be able to kind of give you some comparisons and talk about what i like and what i don't like about this bike but uh anyways let's just go for a ride today and have a chat all right so here's our first little off-road test little ride deal here oh a little bit of water neutral all right so what i want to do first is someone decided to drop their office chair here what i want to do first is go on and get into no nope, wrong button it's really cool i set these buttons you can program to what you want and as you see i can switch right to my ride mode i was in the street before Again, I am past my first service. On my first service, I was in rain mode. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go to rally mode. And this is cool because you can adjust it. Again, throttle response, which I got on off-road, so it's not too crazy. Um, I got it set to 6. Which you can adjust the uh, traction control mid-ride ABS off, which I wish you can set this ABS in steps. Uh, maybe just not as aggressive off-road because I have locked up that back wheel. And uh, again, this bike's easy to handle, but it scared me a little bit, you know. Um, so anyways, there we go, that, traction control, and then our quick shifter is on. So again, just right there, whoop, let me get back to, there we go, back button. So it's really cool, now you can see we're in that, and I can just press these arrows up and down and adjust that traction control right there. All of them are pretty aggressive, so I kind of, you know, leave it on six or seven for now until I get too used to it. But anyways, really, really cool to be able to adjust those super easy by the controls here. So let's go on and test this bad boy out on a quick little off-road stint here. I don't know if the wind is too bad. I'll close the visor a little bit here until it starts getting spicy. It's a little hot out here today. Okay, we'll go, what am I in second? Let me get down to first here. Look at this, like just things like that. Zip it around, ooh, that mud was pretty soft right there. Just things like that, like being able to flick this bike through them kind of situations. Not sure which way I should have gone, but we're gonna go right, yowzers right there but right there like the whole bike is dancing around in this sandy soft mud that happens a lot i don't know if you guys are seeing this here the quick shifter when i pop it up from first to second it'll automatically go into a neutral i, I don't know that's that may be just me my africa twin was dct so i'll take the blame right there right <laughs> it might be me getting used to the clutch anyways back to talking about the bike just back there in that little bit it's sandy it's wet it's soft it's dancy, and this bike is so, you can't even put it into words. It is so easy to handle. That low weight with that low gas tank, you hear everybody say it online in YouTube videos reviewing this bike, and you're like, yeah, whatever. Okay, you're just, maybe you're a more experienced rider, so on and so forth. Let me pop this ledge real quick here. We're going to have to go into it a little bit. Yucca. Oh, it is just loaded. I didn't think we got any rain recently. I thought that was supposed to come this weekend. But anyways, you, you hear everybody preaching about that on the 890s. And you're just kind of like, yeah, I don't know if I'm buying that. And let me tell you what, it is no joke. This bike is unbelievably easy to handle off-road. And then on-road, it feels like a sport bike. It really does just dipping it around corners and such is something really fun and again that's coming from me at uh road road uh, africa twin what's our route right here we'll go to the right and get in the first uh, coming from an africa twin which was a much bigger bike than this right much much bigger and that is one thing i really notice on this bike it feels small but again that's going to differ person to person um guess we're going Yikesies. Okay, there's a big puddle up here that uh, 
apparently there's some rain came and I'm not sure how crazy this puddle up here is gonna be we'll see but again like this bike is oh man amazing on off-road like this this is nothing aggressive right so maybe you're a little more crazy than me or so on and so forth there's that big puddle not this one but the one right after it woof, woof. the whole back end okay so usually i take this route right here but it's definitely filled up a little bit i think we can still get by yo is that a snake that just went through that water you can see it moving right there I swear it was. Well, good thing we didn't go down, huh? <laughs> okay. Whew. That that there's always water in that little that little puddle right there. But wow, just getting through that. Nice. As always, this is some loaded sand. Okay, so we're gonna exit out this little bitty right here. And I, I don't know on the camera if you guys can see how much. This bike is dancing in the sand, but it is really all over the place. Of course, like any any bike will be off-road, right? They're all gonna be wishy-washy, so don't expect that to go away with any bike. The point is how manageable this is. Oh, bunny. How easy this is and how confidence inspiring. You hear that in so many videos, confidence inspiring. But holy smokes, no fluff right here. All right, let's get back on the road. We're gonna go get one more off-road bit and then we'll get onto some trails. Now, one thing I wanna mention real quick before we get to the other bit, which I hope the wind's not too crazy right now. And talking about the wind being crazy, I know they updated the windshield on this bike. It is still small. My chin is right in line with it here. I'm probably right at six feet. Hence the reason I had to buy one of these goofy visors because they don't make any uh, aftermarket windshields for this yet, which is a real stinker. Now, pros and cons, like my Africa Twin, I had the big old windshield and, oh, I should get out of rally mode because I don't got ABS on my rear. Hold on a second. Because it won't let me, oh no, you know what? I can, but I'm just gonna stop real quick since I'm on a kind of a backside road. Let me go on, get into neutral. So here we go. So again, you go into set and you can do this while you're riding which is not, not that bad, you know, fairly easy. But I like to kind of be focused on one or the other, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, back on. Anyways, as far as the wind, what I was talking about, even though this windshield's improved, it's, I never tested the old one, but I can tell you this windshield's not great by any means. I, it blocks a lot, everything up here, you know, it blocks all that, but man, it just beats up my head. Like it's banging all the way around. It is, especially on the highway or interstates, it is rough, which I'm about to get on right now. And then I'll be right back with you guys here after we get onto another back road. Now, one thing I want to mention as we just got off the highway right there is the tech package on this bike, the quick shifter and all that stuff. Again, the rally mode that we just took a look at right there. I think it's a must. And as far as the hiding behind like feet, like the cruise control, that could be one that would mess with me as a cruise control because it got the button right here. So it's kind of like, okay, well, if I don't have it, then I got this button that does nothing. You know, that can be a, I don't know, that's kind of weird. But again, I don't know much about KTM. Like what do they have before? What do they have now? Um, where's my trail? I'm not sure. Uh, I think it maybe it's up here. But anyways, again, you know, you can look at Honda with my Africa Twin, well, it had all that stuff on it, right? But was that calculated in the price already? You know, I think it's cool that they're letting you pick what you want. Me personally, I say get the whole tech package so you get all the goodies, but again, as we just got off the highway right there, the quick shifter is absolutely a must in my books. It is a blast to use. All right, so I had to turn around because I believe I missed the trail, which it should be right here. Let me go ahead and get it back into rally mode hopefully i don't stall because i'm just letting it run right now nope caught it okay cool I'm back out back there we go here we go and let's go on and test it here with stuff that's a little bit more than what we just did back there and i've rode this many times on my twin and everything but i think i might be able to take some different lines with this bike oh yeah just easy to maneuver it in and out 
you know that's what i noticed on my twin when i used to ride it's kind of like okay if i'm going that way that's where i'm going and that's that hey take a look at that little turtle little tiny turtle look at him tiny turtle all right let's let him do what he's doing as i stall <laughs> okay oh yeah oh yeah bouncy bouncy okay oh, oh this is soft this is soft let me get back in the first we'll go up over this route uh, you know these stock tires they're not the ooh, 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 ooh. okay that's deeper they're not the best but they're not bad by any means and it's a combination right you can say oh the tires aren't that bad well the bike is super easy as well like i've never you know this back of this bike is dancing everywhere and i've never you know uh, been able to just buzz through that it, the africa twin used to sink down so you got that combination right but uh, I, I really think that combination of this bike being lightweight, easy to flick and dip. And again, I think the stock tires, they're pretty good, right? Usually I'm like, all right, let me get out of these stock tires. But uh, these are getting me by on the road and really making me comfortable off-road as well. So I'm definitely going to run them down and then I'll change out. Probably just some, what do they call it, Tractionator GPS's, I believe. Those are the next ones I want to try. All right. Now, I did adjust the suspension on this bike because, again, I'm going up to uh, Tennessee. I got about a, I don't know, nine, ten hour ride, a lot of interstate. And um, I did adjust the suspension already to comfort mode, which I believe is pretty much how it is stock if the dealer sets it that way. Unless that's how it comes out of the crate, I'm not sure. But anyways, I did adjust mine to like the comfort mode. And it still feels a little bit firm, right? We got a lot of bumps right here, but it still feels a little firm compared to the twin, which is known to be a little bit soft, but it's not uncomfortably firm. Definitely manageable firm, you know? And that's really the vibe I get with this bike. It's like adventure slash sports bike. That's truly what it feels like, you know, which I hope it does good on a tour as well. So, okay, here we go. Let's get our bearings here. Down this. I wish the GoPro picked up these uh, transitions and such better, you know. Now, I don't want to get soaked because I'm going down to the beach, so I'm going to take this water a little bit slower here. There we go. Perfect. This quick shifter, again, is so nice off-road. Just being able to pop it up and down. It's almost like, again, it's a must, you know? And, and, and I get it. You read a lot online. People are like, yo, why is KTM hiding that back there? I can't say it enough, guys, how just awesome this bike is. We're in some fairly soft sand right here going about 35 miles an hour yeah it's dancing but you're, you're not worried about it you know the, the other bike that I had before not the twin but what this bike reminds me of as far as confidence on the road of course the speed's different and everything right but the Royal Linfield Himalayan man that bike is just I've stated it before that bike just gives you oh whoa, 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 okay 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 that was a that was a little bit deeper right when I was going to that turn and it just, it just almost took me over. So let me take this turn a little wider instead of trying to cut it. There we go. Now I know my sound is not great right now and that's exactly what I wanna kinda express to you guys as I talked about with the windshield and my little visor I have up here. The wind blockage, even though the windshield's improved right here, it's fantastic waist down. And I'm really not getting any in my chest either, so I don't feel like I'm getting ripped off the bike. And again, uh, my legs down here with the new fairings and the gas tank, and of course, I'm blocked fantastic. I almost don't feel any wind at all, you know what I mean? But again, right here, hence the reason I'm using this deal, which I'm not a big fan of these things. I'm one, they bounce around a whole bunch. I mean, right here, since this windshield's stocked a little bit lower, this isn't too bad. I still see over it, you know. But again, it, they're not my favorite thing to use. But me, at right at six feet, this bike needs something. Because even going, you know, 65, 70, it's just going to beat you up on the head. And right now, it's pretty good. Is it perfect? No. And once 
aftermarket windshields, you know, come up and come available. You all know me if you've been around for my Africa Twin content. I will be trying windshields because I, I like good wind blockage. I like getting on the road and riding for a long time. What I would want is something a little bit wider, probably coming out to right here, and then probably right up to here. You know what I mean? Uh, adjustable would be amazing. Uh, necessary? I, I don't know. You know, this, this windshield, let me tell you the good things about this windshield. It's amazing off-road. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, but again, why I wanted to record this as I'm riding is I want you to kind of hear that wind noise. I know you can't feel it because it's through a video, but just it's whipping me from this side over here right now. You guys can probably pick some of it up. And that's kind of what it feels like, you know. I think this is again a must, but off-road it's and that's the nice thing about this being adjustable, right? But off-road, it's so cool because you can see over it. You, you, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see down here, how the windshield goes all the way low when this is flat, as I stated in my first video of this bike. It's so cool because you see the entire road in front of you off-road, which is very, very nice when riding off-road. You can see all the terrain and what's coming up or what's below you. I absolutely love it. But again, even though this windshield is improved, for touring, let me put it that way, that's probably the better way to put it. For touring, the stock windshield is a no-go. You're going to need this for off-roading, you're perfectly fine. For around towning, I think you're perfectly fine. I'd probably still suggest one of these and then just adjust it as you can. Like right now, we're on the road. I'm going to have it up when we go off-road up here a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and clip it back, uh, click it down a few notches. So, again, improvement, I guess, from the previous, which I've never ridden but I can't wait for aftermarket ones to come up. Now I want to go on and get off the bike for a little bit and just point out a few things that I've noticed, kind of my perception of the bike, again, with just being seven, 800 miles. And then we'll go right back up on this road and just ride some basic gravel, kind of what I think what a lot of us end up doing here, right? This kind of riding. But talking about the 890 Adventure, again, just looking at it right here, like I stated in my previous video, I think one thing that you hear a lot about is the looks, the cosmetics of this bike. Let's look at it this way. A lot of people are going to say it's ugly, number one being the headlight, and I doubt my little clip-on windshield thing is helping that out at all, but the headlight, I don't know. I personally love it. It looks futuristic, kind of alien, bug eyes, you know, there's a lot of things you can think of it of, and when you look at it online, it's kind of like, what's going on there? But when you actually start seeing it in person and you ride it, it just gives it a sporty look, and it's not so much just the headlight, but it goes with the rest of the curves of the bike. It just gives it, again, a sporty look. The hand guards into the sharp edges on the side with the gas tank and the back fairings. Now, talking about that, the mirrors, you can see I already have some replacement mirrors on it. Like, why does this bike, they come with these big old things and then these round mirrors. It's like the goofiest thing. This bike is just sharp every edge is sharp and it's cutting here and cutting there and then you got these big round goofy mirrors it, it makes absolutely no sense to me so uh, that's one thing i think you need to change so we talked about the windshield the mirrors are an instant no matter what replace asap one other thing that was weird is see i got this little deal right here out of the box off the floor it's just open it, it, like you got your skid plate which is just plenty fine i was gonna buy a replacement i'm like why i mean this is plenty good right there until something happens then i'll replace it but um it's weird how that's cut out and there's actually screw holes there for something to be there so uh, did they forget to put it there or is it not included or what's the deal so anyways i bought this off amazon it was like 25 bucks uh, by the way everything i show you i will have the uh links down in the description but it definitely needs a fair and extender as well because you can see it flings up so much back here so hopefully i can find a fair and extender or whatever you call a deal right there to prevent that flinging up around there but now coming back around the bike again this is something I believe they upgraded again. I've never ridden the older versions, but apparently they didn't have this and the headlight was just sitting there So I can't speak on the old one, but I really like this implementation right here uh, again The wind blockage is fantastic everything down the wind blockage is absolutely amazing. Um, you can see I also uh, changed out my foot pegs to little wider ones the stock ones aren't bad i always take the rubber off instantly because it's just slippery off-road so i upgraded those 
uh, not too much. Again, all the links down in the description. But other than the foot pegs, what I want you to look at is the brake. And then let me lean over this side and you can see the clutch. Now, let me, let's swing around here so I can explain it better. This is something that's really weird on this bike. So your foot pegs, even with the stock ones, not just these jumbo ones, it's so far in. So you, you gotta, you know, of course it's a good practice to always keep your foot in, but you really have to focus. Because sometimes you just be out here just kind of resting regular and you're like, wait, wait, where is it, where is it? You really gotta go inwards, you know, and that goes the same with the brake pedal over there. But that's great, because it keeps you, again, off-road, keeping your feet tight and in right there. So. Really weird, but something I really like. Now, going right back here to the exhaust. As you guys have probably heard with me riding, you know, this exhaust has no life to it. It sounds like a scooter or something. It's, gosh, it just has nothing. And you can, you can take that as a pro or con, right? Off-road, you're going to still be able to hear nature. You don't got the bike rumbling and sounding crazy. Um, me personally, I like a little body. I like to hear my bike when I'm shifting and so on and so forth. So I do have a wings exhaust on order. It should be here this week. So again, that's, you know, I guess personal preference. Now coming up to the seat, this stock seat is really nice. Actually, I got it in a low position, which I still can't flat foot this bike. It, you know, looks smaller than it really is again, but I, I think this stock seat is pretty nice it's fairly plush the back one is super plush as you can see right there it's cool when you pop this off you got a storage compartment underneath there and then under each back bit which these can just pop off i'm not going to do it right now but it's just pop pop and then it slides out on both sides and you got a little storage tray in here and in that one and then i think it's under the back seat or is it under this seat anyways you got storage compartment under both of them there okay this is something i wanted to mention right here and this is again coming from a honda fanboy right so looking at the bike right like this and the videos won't give it justice but the controls they're they're easy right everything's in the right place your blinker and everything like that and it's really cool they light up at night that's one thing i always complain about on my africa twin is that they weren't illuminated at night and you never knew what you were pressing so my gripe about it though is they feel cheap. They just, they don't just feel cheap, they almost look cheap. Like this is the blinker bit right here. I mean, just look at that thing dancing. It's not even flush in line with it. It's just, ah, uh, it's weird. It just feels so incredibly chintzy. And then the cruise control thing, which it works. And I like the placement of it better than how it was on the twin. But like, if this bike goes down, you got this little dinky plastic bit that I feel like is just going to break off. Again, only time will tell, but it just feels cheap up here. And, and talking about plastics, I feel like there's a lot of plastics going all the way up to here, up to the back. A lot of plastics on this bike. You kind of feel it and hear it off-road when you're going over a lot of bumps and everything. Again, I'm comparing it to my experience with Hondas, which I think are very well-defined, put-together machines. Not saying this isn't. And again, I'm in my mind like, well, I want the lightweight. I want the easy maneuverability, hence the reason for the plastics, right? So it's, you know, it's a give and take right here. And I'm willing to take this. This is what I was looking for. And I'm fine with it. The plastics are put together well, but I'm just letting you know that, yes, there are a lot of plastics. And you notice that on this bike, even back here to this rack. I mean, it's solid. It's solid. It really is. So don't, don't act like I'm bashing it here but you do notice the excessive plastics. Now, before we jump back on it and head up this road here, I do want to let you know, I have a lot of mods coming for this. Um, as I already mentioned, the wings exhaust, I got the KTM tank bag, which I really love this thing. It's a little wobbly, as you can see, because you can take it off and use it as like a book bag. A little wobbly, but I really like it, a lot of space. I have the Givi racks coming, because my Givi cases for my twin are the same ones that go on the 890. So we're gonna put those on right there. We'll have the cases, we have the exhaust, um, and then again, some other mods coming out and about. So I'll do a whole mod video eventually as well, but today we're kind of looking at it in a stock form, kind of right here, giving our first impressions. And so far, hope you guys are uh, jiving with me. But for the last little bit, I'm just gonna ride a basic little dirt gravel road, and let me show you how great she handles. First off, let's go on and adjust our little visor, this thing is super easy. Just click it down, right down to there. You can go lower even. And then we're gonna spin these ones up front, tilt it up, and look at that, completely out of our way. Now you still got the brackets right there, but at least it's out of our way, that easy. Again, 25 bucks or 30 bucks, you, I can't recommend that enough, again, for this current condition right there. Anyways, let's go on and fire it up. Let's get on this road, test it out on some gravel.
so incredibly planted on stuff like this, guys. It's just, again, as I stated even before when we were off-road, you can't put it into words. It's something you gotta try. It's so hard to explain. And this quick shifter, gosh, I love it for off-road. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention? I forgot to tell you all, I got bar risers. I don't know if you can see it down there. I had to put bar risers on this bike because the handlebars are so low. When I'd stand up, I'd be like hunched over like this. But now with these bar risers, if you guys can see, it is the perfect position right now. Absolutely phenomenal. And then, what the heck were they doing? And then when you're sitting on the bike, your arms almost just like rest. You're not tense. You're not leaning forward. You're not leaning back. It's just... Oh man, it's right there. Super duper nice. So again, those bar risers are fantastic as well. Gosh, you just, I'm just pushing my weight over. Leaning my weight over to the left here. And it's just, holy moly. I almost feel like it's going to get me in trouble because it's so flickable. You know, I'm like, all right, yeah, I can lean it a little bit more. That's how you feel on this bike is, yeah, I can just push it a little more. I can do a little bit more. And again, I got to watch myself. I, I don't want to get myself in trouble or, or be stupid on it, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. There goes that ABS, that back tire just, ooh, that back tire went sideways with that ABS off. Again, I wish I could adjust it to different levels that's one thing I do wish but again it's you know so easy to handle that I got through it but I do wish you can adjust the ABS into multiple multiple steps oh this looks a little dicey right here <laughs> let's get over here I don't know how deep the puddle is oh whoa 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 holy smokes guys holy smokes I doubt the camera will pick that up but uh Man, this bike was 10 ways to sideways right there. Oh my gosh, I didn't even put a foot down. I just handled it kind of like I would have done on my 300L. Oh gosh, I, I know the GoPro will not pick that up, but wow, this bike was every which way. And again, that's where it is, that weight's down low. So you're just kind of leaning and balancing with it. You know, it's, gosh, words just can't describe it. You, you, you gotta ride it, you know what I mean? You really do. So, and for me, the Africa Twin kind of training me and break me in with such a big heavy bike, it makes this even easier. But that was awesome back there. And that back there kind of sums up why I went with the KTM 890 Adventure over my, and traded in my Twin for stuff like that. I would, that would have been a bad situation on the Twin. And wow, off-road, this bike is no joke a dream. It really is. And, and like I stated, I hope another little turtle geez they're all out today but um hopefully it does just as good on a tour as it does off-road all right so i am back home off the bike off that nice little ride right there a little bit of on road off road got to see those jets i hope you guys enjoyed those couple of clips that was so cool the the actual air shows the next couple of days but it's not busy at all they're doing their practice so anyways that was really cool i, I really needed this ride today it's very helpful for me and uh anyways but anyways talking about my um first impressions of this bike my initial impressions very very pleased very happy with it uh, i gotta admit like yeah it's 700 miles i believe it was right there um still in that honeymoon phase right but you talk honeymoon phase for me you all know the africa twin was my dream bike i still love that bike i'm not hating on it i don't think i ever will i may have another one in my garage eventually you know what i mean KTMs were never on my mind. So uh, when I say honeymoon, it's mild. This has never been a bike that's been on my list. It's never been on my, you know, it's just once I spotted them, started researching them, then I couldn't get it out of my mind. I was like, wow, that's what I'm looking for in a bike. And talking about initial impressions, that's what is delivering. What I'm looking for in a bike. My kind of riding. On-road, off-road, some touring. And I think it does all of them very very good great only time can tell again i go on my tour this coming week i'll come back i'll have roughly 
two, three thousand miles on it. You're doing tail to dragon and stuff like that and riding it all the way up to Tennessee. So after that, I'll do my real review and be able to break it down, let you know what I like, what I don't like, and truly be able to speak about it. Right now, again, I'm still learning the bike and stuff. So, but my initial impressions is it's really something you got to swing your leg over and ride because watching my video or any other videos, a lot of people are going to tell you the same thing, how flickable, how maneuverable it is, how easy it is to handle. You know, it's like a sport bike off-road or an off-road sport bike. That That's the best way to put it, you know what I mean? And it's got some giddy-up. It really does. So, uh, again, ho hopefully this helped. Yeah, I gave you a little insight on the new 2023 890 Adventure. I'm having a blast with it. Many more rides to come. Much more content to come as well. So, uh, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell, and I hope you see you on some of those adventures as well. Anyways, catch you in the next one. Bye now.